continuing with this training series, today we will learn how to taxi and take off from an airbase, with the AJS-37 Vigan. The aircraft has already been cold started and is ready to taxi, the mission consists of, taxi to runway, before takeoff checks, take off, fly to the first waypoint, B1. This mission is based on the procedures described on the DCS AJS-37 Flight Manual version 2.1. This training series is set on the Nevada map, and the approximate mission time is 15 minutes. By default, the pilot's body is shown, you can use left shift plus P, to hide it if you prefer. When a voiceover tells you to interact with a cockpit element, wait until the voiceover has finished, before performing the interaction. If you are repeating the mission, note that most voiceovers can be skipped just by pressing the spacebar. Press spacebar to begin. We will first contact air traffic control to request taxi clearance. The Vigan's FR-22 primary radio is already tuned to the ATC frequency. Press the key or button that you have binded to the FR-22 push to talk. The DCS communications menu should appear. Select F1 request taxi to runway. Press spacebar once ATC gives you clearance. Springfield 1 1 request startup. Good, note that ATC assigned runway 31 to our flight. You need to be careful to taxi towards the correct runway, as this airbase has two runways, each with two possible directions, 08, 13, 26, and 31. On the briefing we have an airbase diagram, with the taxi route drawn in orange. Press spacebar to continue. Parking brake, release. Briefly press the brake pedals, to release the parking brake handle. Ok, we are now ready to taxi. On the Vigan, the rudder pedals are used to steer the nose wheel, which has a maximum turn of 30 degrees. You can add differential braking if you need a tighter turn. Gradually increase throttle above ground idle. Note that the exhaust nozzle closes. At around 70-75% to 75 RPM, the aircraft will begin to roll forward. Check brakes, by fully pressing both toe brakes simultaneously. Good, release the toe brakes and let the aircraft roll again. Turn right by pushing right rudder. Strive to follow the yellow taxi line. The engine has high thrust on idle, taxing should be done carefully. On the next corner, turn to the right again. Careful not to scrape the parking canopies. Continue to taxi along the yellow line. We are near taxiway G. Turn left on the second intersection of yellow lines. Good, this is taxiway G. Next, turn left again to take taxiway B. Try to follow the yellow line closely, to practice your steering ability. You are now on taxiway B, proceed forward until you reach taxiway E. Turn right, to take taxiway E. We are now on taxiway E, approaching runway 31. Stop the aircraft just short of the runway, the stop line is marked with twin red lights on its extremes. 
we will now contact ATC again to request takeoff clearance. Press the key or button that you have binded to the push to talk button of the FR-22 radio. The DCS communications menu should appear. Select F1 request takeoff. Radio, one, one. Press request spacebar takeoff. once ATC gives you clearance. Okay, now that you have clearance, release the brakes and enter the runway. If ATC tells you unable to clear takeoff, ignore it, as it is a long-standing DCS bug. Turn right, and align with the center line of the runway. Once aligned, press the wheel brakes and stop the aircraft to a complete halt. Good, we will now proceed with the rest of the before takeoff procedure. Main and backup heading indicators, main and backup altimeters. Check. First, compare the headings of the ADI with the one of the central indicator and the one of the backup course indicator. They should match and be around 325 degrees magnetic. Next, compare the two altimeters. They should match and be very near QFE altitude. Press spacebar to continue. Master Mode Selector, set to Nav. This should be done no more than two minutes before takeoff, to avoid excessive temperature rise on the avionics bay. The HUD is now active, adjust its brightness with the highlighted knob. Press Spacebar to continue. Enable the radar by setting its mode switch to its A1 or A2 position, its screen will illuminate. Use the highlighted knob to reduce the radar screen brightness and make it easier to see. The radar will start working once the aircraft is on the air. Press spacebar to continue. Runway heading, check. The Vigan does not have an INS or GPS for navigation, instead it relies on a system based on the principle of automatic dead reckoning, ADR, where the pilot inputs the origin point for navigation, the takeoff position, and thereafter the aircraft senses any changes in course, speed and attitude, updating its current position every 103 milliseconds. The drift due to wind is compensated by either manually entering forecasted wind values, or with aircraft movements detected by the Doppler unit. For this ADR system to work, it requires a known initial point and heading. On the Viggins navigation system, our current LS waypoint corresponds to our starting airbase, and with that information the computer knows both our initial position, and the heading of its main runways. We can check our current runway heading, by turning the computer data selector to its Bonagrand's position, used for managing runway headings, TILS channels, and boundary lines for waypoints, and the INUT switch set to UT, output. Do it now. The six-digit display shows two items, its leading four digits is the runway's true heading, not magnetic, while its last two digits is the TILS channel used by this airbase for instruments landing. We can see that the Viggins computer thinks this runway has a true heading of 91.5 degrees, which is clearly wrong, as this is actually runway 31, with a true heading of 325 degrees. As a runway usually has two directions we can use, you can tell the computer to employ the opposite direction by clicking on the LS button. Let's check that direction, press LS now. The display now shows a heading of 271.5 degrees, which is the reciprocal of the previous direction, but still isn't close to the heading of our current runway. Clearly, we are on a totally different runway than what the Viggins computer knows. Fortunately, we can manually enter the data for the missing runway. To do that, change the INUT switch to IN to input the correct runway data. The display changes to all zeros to indicate that it's ready for the new data. Next, on the numeric pad enter 3, 2, 5, 0, corresponding to the 325.0 degrees true heading of this runway, and add 0, 1 to keep the TILS channel as it was. To enter the new value, press LS. The display changes to all zeros once more, to denote that it has accepted the data. Now return the INUT switch back to UT, output. The new runway data that we just entered, is shown, 325.0, plus 01 for the TILS channel. Now the Viggins navigation system has the correct initial position and heading needed for the ADR navigation. 
Finally, return the computer data selector knob to Act Pause, which will display the aircraft's current position in longitude and latitude. Act Pause is available only in output mode, UT, as it does not accept any input. On Act Pause, the display shows the current longitude and latitude using the leading four digits, alternating both coordinates every one second. The fifth digit displays the status of the turnnav system, if the status is 5, the turnnav is making small corrections to the position keeping, increasing the navigation accuracy. However, turnnav uses the radar altimeter, so it is able to work only at altitudes under 600 meters. The sixth digit shows the estimated error on the aircraft position, expressed in kilometers. Press spacebar to continue. SPAC, confirm it's on. SPAC is the main damping mode of the autopilot. It is engaged automatically and will continually damp movement in all three axes, in order to stabilize the aircraft. It should be engaged at all times during normal flight. Press spacebar to continue. Master warning and warning lights, check. Confirm that all warning lights are out, with the exception of the three green lights of the landing gear, and the yellow X-tank bra light, of the external fuel tank, is lit while RPM are below 70%. Press spacebar to continue. HUD Symbology, check that its information is correct. The Vigan is one of the earliest combat aircraft to employ a HUD to display information to the pilot, and as it is very different from those fitted to more modern aircrafts, we will describe its elements briefly. The HUD frame has a higher and a lower position, allowing the Symbology to be visible both during normal flight, and also at high angles of attack such as during takeoff and landing. A lever on the left side of the HUD base toggles these two positions. Make sure the HUD is at its lower position, press spacebar to continue. For takeoff, the HUD adopts a different symbology than during normal flight. The flight path marker becomes an attitude indicator, to help maintain a correct attitude during rotation and initial climb. The heading scale, timeline, and attitude indicator are all moved down, 10 degrees below the horizon, so that when you rotate the aircraft, and place the attitude indicator aligned with the horizon line, the aircraft will be on a 10 degrees pitch-up attitude. The pole lines that touch the horizon line represent 1, 2, and 3 degrees deviations on heading or pitch, such that if you place the attitude indicator aligned with the tallest pole, the aircraft would be on a 13 degrees pitch-up attitude. Press spacebar to continue. The highlight shows the current altitude. Source can be either barometric or radar altitude, depending on the HOD CISI switch. For this mission select RHM, radar. The altitude is always presented in three digits, between 0 to 990 meters the altitude is presented in increments of 10. Below 100 meters, the altitude is displayed in increments of 5 meters. During the takeoff run, the timeline will expand with increasing airspeed. When the extremes of the line touch the rotation marks, the aircraft has reached the correct rotation speed. At that point, pull very slightly on the flight stick and the aircraft will rotate and raise its nose. Be gentle, do not let the attitude indicator go over the tallest pole, or the tail of the aircraft can strike the ground. Press spacebar to continue. Takeoff pitch trim, check. To have an easier takeoff, set an initial pitch trim of 5 degrees nose up when flying with an external fuel tank, or 4 degrees if no fuel tank is fitted. Press spacebar to finish these pre-takeoff checks. We are now ready to take off. As things will happen rather quickly, let's briefly review the procedure beforehand. Please do not start until we have reviewed all steps. 1. Apply full wheel brakes. 2. Advanced throttle to maximum military power, no afterburner. Check that EGT does not exceed 590 degrees Celsius plus ambient temperature, for this mission the limit is 611 degrees. 3. Release the brakes, steer the aircraft using gentle rudder pedals movement. 4. If needed, ignite afterburner. On longer runways, the Vigan is perfectly able to take off using just military power and a 10 degrees nose-up pitch. However, this is a short runway, so be sure to use at least Zone 2 afterburner. You can check the zone on the afterburner zone indicator, or on the exhaust nozzle gauge. 5. During the takeoff run, monitor the timeline on the HUD. 6. Rotate when the timeline reaches its end markers. Align the attitude indicator with the horizon line, 
if using just military power, or with the top of the outer poles if using afterburner. 7. Check the airspeed indicator, the Vigan should lift off at around 290 to 300 km per hour. 8. Retract the landing gear once airborne. This action also retracts the foreplane flaps, which may cause the aircraft to drop a bit, so avoid doing it too low, and make sure to be at least at 10 meters above the ground. 9. Climb with the initial 10 or 13 degrees attitude, until the HUD is out of the takeoff mode. You can notice the mode change, because the attitude indicator will be replaced by a flight path marker. The FPM looks like a small airplane, with a top fin, which actually functions like a time on target indicator, which we will use on a future training mission. 10. Elevate the HUD glass, to better display HUD symbology when at lower angles of attack. This step is the last on the procedure, press spacebar to proceed with the takeoff. Ok, we will now proceed with the takeoff. 1. Apply full wheel brakes. 2. Advance throttle to maximum military power, check EGT. 3. Release brakes. 4. Use rudder pedals to steer. Advance throttle into afterburner. 1-1. Monitor the timeline, rotate when it reaches its markers. Airborne. HUD is now out of takeoff mode, turn left towards the waypoint dot on the horizon line, to head towards the B1 waypoint. Raise the HUD glass, do not exceed 500 meters altitude, to have maximum navigation precision. The jump of the HUD symbology was caused by the Turnav system making a position fix. Steer the aircraft to head towards the dot on the horizon. You are now 15 kilometers away from the B1 waypoint, a timeline has appeared on the HUD.
Good, you are now within 1 km of the waypoint, the destination indicator should advance to be 2. Excellent. You have successfully completed this training mission, taxi, and take off from airbase. Press spacebar to exit from the mission.